morning everyone welcome um, I just wanted to go through how I mix my base coat paint and then how I test it out um, and I'll probably also go through an example of mixing up one of my puddle paints and this so this is just kind of a like a answer to a lot of questions that I've received lately from uh, people on TikTok and YouTube watchers who have messaged me so I'm gonna go through it with you guys um, I, I will mention you know if you haven't had a chance to watch uh, any of Sarah Taylor modern arts tutorials or even Dwight pours um, they both also you know, they, they create similar pearl cells. Their recipes are different from mine slightly. Um, Dwight doesn't use any of the enamels. And um, I actually usually use a different enamel from Sarah. My ratios are a little bit different. But, um, you know, it's always good to start, start off with, you know, other people's recipes and then tweak them for your needs, for your style for the things that you're trying to accomplish. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use a brand new cup even though I reuse everything over and over again. I'll go ahead and use a cup so you can see a little bit better. Um, but the first thing is the Artist Loft Soft Body Acrylic Paint. Um, so I'm just gonna make a white base coat for this example. So I'm going to start with that um, and you know honestly I like to go ahead and mix up a big batch uh, but for this I'll just do I'll mix up one cup so I'm going to fill it up to about there and we'll start with that and you can see it's just above the line so right about here I'm gonna start with that. And then I'm gonna go in with my Liquitex pouring medium. And I'm gonna go ahead and add about a whole part, equal parts to the paint. Do you have to use this much? No, that's just what I do. Um, like I said, there's a lot of recipes out there. So you can really get away with all sorts of different recipes depending on what you're trying to accomplish. This is just the what I've played with and and what I like. And then this is the GAC 800 and I'll show you the bottle in a second. And I don't measure, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And so that's also about a part. So one part paint, one part Liquitex pouring medium, one part GAC 800 and here's the bottle for the GAC 800 uh, it's a product by Golden uh, it's a fantastic product it's going to uh, extend your pouring acrylic colors it's going to prevent crazing it says that on the bottle <laughs> so I love this stuff um, now when you're just starting out you could get away with your base paint and just using Floetrol and an enamel of some sort. Um, and of course, like I've said before, Dwight doesn't use any enamel, so his recipe works for, uh, you know, if you're looking to get cells, his recipe works for that too. And all he uses is paint, Floetrol, and water. Uh, but he uses a, a lot more Floetrol than I like to use. I actually don't like using a ton of Floetrol, so I'll use about a quarter to a half part of Floetrol on my base. And that's it, that's all I'm gonna add of this Floetrol. 
Um, so because I'm not using Floetrol as my pouring medium, I'm just using it as kind of an additive to help the cell creation. I feel like it creates the kind of cells that I'm looking for. Uh, that's why I put so much pouring medium in with my paint. All right, and then you have a few different options for your enamel if you're going to go the enamel route. Uh, there is this bare and this is the interior satin enamel deep base 7300 and again that's just something that um, was recommended by Sarah Taylor I also use it some and then there's also the option of using folk art they make this gloss finish acrylic paint and actually you can find it at Walmart uh, but this is the wicker white All right, so I like the cell effects that I get from this actually more so than the bear, to be honest. And that's just personal preference. Um, you can also use the Deco Art Satin Enamels. And this is just their pure white. The thing that I don't particularly like about using the Deco Art is I feel like it gives you these grainy kind of textures in your paint. So I've actually kind of gone away from using this for the most part. Um, I, I'm still going to use it here and there to use it up because I don't want to waste any paint. But for the most part, you know, I use this more than anything. Today I'm going to mix a little bit of the bare and a little bit of this in with my base coat just to kind of see what kind of cell creation I get. So let me go ahead and do that. And it doesn't take much um, with this. So the more enamels that you put in your paint, the more color you're gonna lose. So the more of your puddle paint color you're gonna lose. So I just put a little bit maybe maybe a quarter part I wouldn't even say that much to be honest all right and then we have the bear and you can see it's really thick so also I'm just gonna get a healthy scoop just like that. That's it. That's all I'm putting in my paint. So we're going to go with that and then I'll mix it up and I'll speed you guys up for this part. All right, so you want to make sure that it's mixed up well, that you've really incorporated all of the paint and the mediums together before you start adding water. Alright, so you can see right now it's it's pretty thick. Okay, and so for some pores this might be the right thickness. For what I do, um, it needs to be really thin. So I'm going to start adding a little bit of water at a time. Um, don't go just dumping a whole bunch of water, especially when you're mixing like your puddle paints. If you have uh, thicker paint, sometimes it'll clump up on you if you add too much water at once. I'd say the Artist Loft doesn't really do that, but if you're not sure how much water you're going to need, it's better to just take it slow, add a little bit at a time and get it to the right consistency. So for some recipes you're looking for you know paint that mounds a little bit. For me I'm just looking for um, kind of a creamer consistency. I don't want my paint to leave any trace and, and see it's still kind of leaving a tail line So I'm going to add some more water. I 
And you can also feel the difference when you're stirring. You'll feel less resistance. So we're getting closer. And so that GAC and that Liquitex pouring medium allows me to add more water to my paint. Um, and it's going to prevent you from losing the vibrancy of your color. It's going to prevent crazing, cracking. It's going to help give you that even smooth finish. All right, so that's pretty good. And you can see it's not really leaving a trace. Now, sometimes when I use Floetrol, my paint tends to thicken back up a little bit after I've let it sit. So I may have to add some more water later, and that's fine. I always try out my paint before I get ready to pour and see what the consistency is. But we're going to start with that. Okay, so I'm also going to mix up some of the gold. Um, and I still have a little bit left over, but I know I'm going to need more for the pour that I'm trying to do. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little bit more. And I am just going to mix it. <laughs> in the cup that already has a little bit left over because I don't want to waste. And uh, these plastic cups don't chunk up too much on the inside, so I'm not really worried about clumps. But if there are any clumps, I'll just pick them out with my tweezers. So we're gonna go with just that much gold, not a ton. Just mixing up a little bit. So again, I'm going to use the GAC 800 and I'm going to use the Liquitex pouring medium. Um, I don't normally use a lot of Floetrol in my puddle paints. Um, I've tried it with, I've tried it without. I haven't noticed a huge difference in adding the Floetrol for the cell creation. So honestly, I've just been leaving it out. So again, the, the GAC 800, I'll go ahead and add that in. And once again, I'm, I'm doing about a one to one ratio on the GAC 800. And then the one to one ratio on the Liquitex pouring medium. And I'm eyeballing it, I'm not measuring I could measure, but that's just not my style. Um, would I have more consensus, consistency if I measured? Probably. Uh, but that sucks the enjoyment out of the process for me, to be honest. So I don't measure. So the gold sometimes tend to get a little bit clumpy when you first mix. So you wanna make sure you've really mixed it up good before you start adding water or else it will take you forever to mix up your paint. Um, another way that you could do this is you could also just mix it up in a new cup and then uh, pour out your leftovers into that same cup if you're worried about, you know, paint flakes falling into your paint. As long as you're not scraping your sides too much, you should be all right. But again, if you're worried about those clumps in your paint, you could also just mix it up in a clean cup and then pour your leftovers into that clean cup. All right, so that's pretty incorporated. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some water. And again, take it slow. I find that with these uh, 
Liquitex Basics, again, they usually are pretty, don't take a lot of water, to be honest. But it, it goes a lot smoother if you add a little bit of water at a time, rather than just dumping in the amount that you think you need. The metallics are kind of funny. Um, I feel like they're a little bit denser because they're using like mica in their pigments. So the way that it feels when you mix these paints, they feel a little bit thicker than the other paints. So even though they might be the right consistency by look, by feel, they might still feel like they're a little thick. Um, and that's pretty normal. So you can do you can do a drip test and I'll show that to you in a minute just to see if the consistency is the same as your base paint because you do want to try to keep the consistency the same. And add a little bit more. And uh, it is tough to get cell reaction on metallics, I'm going to be honest. Um, I have been able to do it with the gold by Liquitex Basics, but I have had trouble with other metallics um, selling up at all. And that's fine, you know, for my style, I'm not always just particularly looking just for cells. You know, I'm more interested in a interesting, com you know, composition. So... It just depends on what you're looking for. If you're trying to, if you're trying to get cells, um, test it out first to see if your paint's going to sell up. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And that feels pretty good. All right, so we'll go with that and see how that goes. All right, so I have this test board <laughs> and I've used it a hundred times and you can see there's a lot of paint on this test board. Um, the, so the first thing you can do to test the consistency of your paint compared to your base, and see this has already started to thicken up a little bit, so I'm going to add just a little bit more water. That's good. So I also have some leftovers from another pour that I did and I think I actually just put too much water in it, but we'll check it out. All right, so the first thing that you can do to, t to test if your consistencies are on point is just put a little bit on your board. I'm gonna puddle about the same amount for each color. Yeah, I know my blue is a little bit too runny. That's okay. It'll it'll thicken back up, um, and you can see the difference right there when you tilt. Right, so the blue is super runny. The gold's pretty runny, and the white needs a little bit more water. Um, and, and so that's one way that you can test it out. That'll tell you really quickly if you need to add water to one of your paints or if maybe you need to add more paint to one of your paints. <laughs> so um, I actually just, I had leftover paint and it had thickened up so I added a little too much water. So now I need to add a little bit more paint. Um, so it is a balance. You do kind of have to do a little bit of a dance to get it to do what you're wanting it to do. 
Um, and it can be really frustrating at first, but once you've done it a few times, um, you get a feel for what your paint should feel like. So now I'm just going to test out the, to see how these cells are going to hold up on my base paint. Sometimes you may have mixed too much enamel in your paint. And uh, that means all your paint's going to disappear. <laughs> and it happens quite often. Um, and so you can do it any way you want. Again, this is one of those tips that I learned from watching some of Sarah Taylor's videos is kind of how to test your paint. So um, she's certainly a great resource. And so I can see, I don't know if you guys can see very well. Let me try to get this a little bit closer, but I can see my gold sinking pretty good. So that tells me, yeah, that's going to sell up. Another way to check it is you can also do like a swipe across your base. And that should give you a pretty, in good, pretty good indication of when you stretch out your paints on the canvas, if they're going to sell up. And honestly, I don't want my paints to sell up too fast because that means I'm going to lose all my color. But I do want them to sell up a little bit. Just pop some of those air bubbles. And so you can see I'm getting some cell reaction in the purple. And there is a little bit in the gold too. It's just really hard to see on the camera. But they're... There are some cells in the gold as well. So one thing that I normally like to do is I actually like to put my gold on top as well. And I feel like um, the gold is usually a little bit denser than the colors, so it's going to sink through the color a little bit better. And that's really it. So that's how I mix my paints. That's how I test out my paints. Um, play around with it. You know, you could also do this on, you could even do this on Yupo paper if you wanted. Um, so there's a lot of different opportunities there. Um, if you have any questions about how I mix my paint or the consistency or anything like that at all, you know, of course, reach out to me. I'm always happy to help. Um, and yeah, happy painting. So that's a pretty good combo. All right, so the other thing that I wanted to talk to you a little bit about is the alcohol inks that I've been using in my paints. Every alcohol ink reacts differently. Um, so I've been using just the metallics on my pores, and the reason why is because the other colors are not as light fast, and also they behave differently. Uh, from the metallics. These colors tend to spread out a lot more across the painting, which if you like that effect, that's cool. Um, I personally don't uh, like the effects of the colors, but I love the effects of the actual metallic alcohol inks. And the metallic alcohol inks are metallic, so uh, you, they're not, you don't have to worry as much about them losing their color because they're they're also more so just kind of pigments that have been mixed up uh, in the alcohol formula. So that's what I've been using. I would say play around with it, see what it's gonna do. The more water you have in your paints, the more your alcohol inks are gonna spread out.
um, and silver definitely spreads out more and this silver is I think the silver is dead let me get a different silver <laughs> camera problems all right here's a good silver yeah and so you can see now I most of my color is sunk but I still have some gold that has stayed on the top um, so that's probably the way that I'll layer it when I go to pour Alright, so the silver disperses a lot more than like the gold or the brass even. And you can see how it breaks up. So I really love that, that it does that and I like that some of my paint colors come up through the silver whenever I drip it on my wet paint. Um, yes, you should you should wear protective gear when you're using alcohol inks. Don't bring, don't do like me and breathe in the fumes. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a mask where you can hear me very well. But I'm also not blending these colors with alcohol either, and that's part of the harmfulness of this product. Is you know breathing in the fumes from mixing with those blending materials is super super dangerous. So. I'm not using that much alcohol ink, so I'm not super concerned, but you definitely want to um, wear a mask or a respirator when you're working with these. Um, try, to, try to be in a well-ventilated area. So that's the brass, just to give you an idea of what the brass does. And you can see it really doesn't take much. It just takes like a drop. That's the copper. I have to order some new alcohol ink soon. And then here's the rich gold. And I like the rich gold because it does have kind of a translucence to it. So you can see how the color underneath is still shining through. And the, it also disperses kind of similar to the silver. It just doesn't disperse as much as the silver does. So by no means do you have to put alcohol inks in your paint. If all you want to do is play with acrylic pouring and, and playing with those pearl cells, you know, by all means. I just really love the texture of adding the alcohol inks to my paintings. Um, and, and so that's, that's me. Anyways, I hope this information was helpful. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to reach out to me. If there's something more specific you'd like to see, let me know. Um, and I will uh, show you the pour. All right, so now we're gonna get ready to do just a small pour. Um, I actually, you know, the colors that I mixed up for this video I actually used on a big pour, but I did it on a TikTok Live and unfortunately um, it didn't save my recording. So I just wanna show you how these colors worked out. Um, so I'll do that on this little mini canvas. And you know, this is just like a little, I think it's a little three by three. It might be a five by five, I could be wrong. Pretty sure it's a three by three. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you the basics of, of uh, how these pores work. And I'll show you also how the alcohol inks react with this paint when it's wet. A little bit more of a close-up because I know on some of my other videos those are usually time-lapse um, so we'll do this one real time. And I'm just checking out my base coat to make sure that it is still the consistency that I want. 
That looks pretty good. So I already have some uh, paints mixed up. This is the cadmium yellow light hue. And I did mix up some of the primary elements sunburst with it by Color Art. I'm just checking all my consistencies because these paints have sat overnight and sometimes they'll thicken up a little bit. And so this is a really pretty color by Lucas Krill. It's their indigo, which is a little bit different than most indigos I've used. Um, I feel like this one's a little bit more purple and I think most of them that I've used have been a little more green. And then this is, this one's thickened up a little bit. <clears throat> this is a custom uh, kind of turquoise color that I mixed. And to be honest, I think it's made up of both Liquitex, Liquitex Basics, uh, Phalo Green, Phalo Blue, small amount of Golden, Titanium White, and I might have added, and I'm sorry, I can't remember. I might have added uh, some phthalo blue and phthalo green of the golden paint too. It's been a minute since I mixed that one. That one's been around for a couple of weeks. And so you can see, you can really use your puddle paints. Like it doesn't take much puddle paint for this technique. Um, most of the paint that you're gonna use is your base more than anything else. Um, so people, I think, often think, well, you waste so much paint when you're doing these pouring techniques. With this technique, not really. Um, at least not compared to some of the other techniques. This is that cadmium red light hue, I believe. Yeah, it's a cadmium red light hue. Um but to me it looks orange. <laughs> so this is my orange color. Uh, they do make a cadmium orange and it's lighter than this, but I like this, this kind of deep shade of orange. They call it red. Okay, we'll go with that. All right, and this is the gold that you saw me mix earlier in the video. It's still pretty good. So those are our colors and again it doesn't take much and it is kind of hard to scale something down this small but we're going to give it a shot. <clears throat> Since my canvas is so small I'm going to try not to waste too much paint. We're going to just spread this out pretty good. So when you're pouring out your base you want to get it really thin on your canvas. Um, if it's running a lot and you still have too much paint on your canvas. So normally also I prime my canvases with a quick coat of the, uh, the artist loft white or whatever base color I'm using. Um, and that's just to make the edges look nicer. Um, it helps, when you're tilting, if you have any runoff paint, it helps that paint to stick to the edges. I'm not doing that with this because this is just a little guy. But normally I do put a coat of paint on the canvas so that um, so that we don't get any bare edges. You know, this paint is so thin that a lot of times your canvas will, will peek through And that's a pretty good coat. Just wipe off my gloves a little bit. And then we'll torch out the air bubbles. This is also a good opportunity to pick out anything that you might have dropped in your paint. If there's any dust or clumps. All 
right, so there we go. <clears throat> so, so like I said, you want it really thin, and you can see my paint's not really running much anymore. So that means we did a pretty good job thinning out that base coat. Um, if you get it too thin, mm -hmm. you'll have trouble getting cells. Um, but this is a small canvas, so it should be good. Um, also, I found or, you know, I've learned just from trial and error that typically these do better when I put the lightest color on the bottom. Um, and that's just, you know, another tip that I kind of learned from watching uh, Sarah Taylor's videos. And that's probably too much paint. So I'm just going to layer in my lighter colors first. And so, you know, this is the kind of the puddle technique. This was originally done by Melly D, I believe. I mean, there could have been somebody else, but that's, as far as I know, she's the one that um, pretty much pioneered this style of painting. Um, and then, you know, artists like Dwight and uh, Sarah Taylor and, there, I mean, there have been so many who have kind of revamped this technique, so... And then I'm going to put my gold on last because, like I said before, um, it, it's a little bit denser typically and uh, it will do better to sink if it's on top. All right, so now is the tilting. And uh, it's just a matter of getting, getting it thin. Get as much of that paint off as you can. If you want to keep some negative space, you can just go back and forth. Or if you don't, you can go ahead and spread it across the whole canvas. We're just going to go for... Something like this. And I really love this color palette combination. Once your cells start popping up, that's a good indication of uh, you need to hurry up and finish tilting because they will start to go wonky on you. If you take too long to tilt it out. So we're going to go with that. Um, and also try to bring it back to center. That'll help your cell development if you bring your paint back towards the center. So we're going to let that develop and you can see it's already selling up pretty quickly. So this would be the time to let it sit for a good 10 to 15 minutes and see what it's going to do. And then you can start messing with the composition. All right, so that's about as far as I'm gonna let it develop for right now. Um, you could keep going and it, it would probably continue to sell up through here. Um, it, I, I, at this point, I'll usually go in with my palette knife and kind of uh, stretch things out. And let's see if I've got a little palette knife that's clean. <laughs> So, I mean, you can draw these lines out if you like, give it some funky designs. Yeah, 
kind of tough to work on a canvas this little, but it will give you an idea of your paint consistencies at least when you're first trying out this technique to see if you're on track. Um, and you can see the gold takes a little bit longer to develop. So you might have to wait even longer just to see what cells you're gonna get. At this point, I'm pretty satisfied with those cells. So I'm just gonna add a little bit out of the alcohol ink. And this is the silver. It's gonna give it some cool effects. I'm sorry my dog is barking outside if you can hear that. This is their morning playtime. And I'll add a, a gold so you can see what the gold looks like over these colors. And yeah, so you can just kind of play around with it, develop your own style, your own techniques, see what you like. Um, I usually let it sit for about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how wet it is. And then I'll go in with my high flow drips. And I know you guys have seen that on some other videos. Sometimes I drip straight out of these bottles. And these are those golden high flow acrylics. So sometimes I'll just drip directly onto the canvas out of the bottles. Um, but lately a lot of what I've been doing is I've been putting a couple of drops on my palette and then taking my paintbrush and then just dripping over the painting. Um, and that kind of keeps those high flow paints from going out of control because they will spread across your paint. Um, and the densities are different and they will kind of just take over if you put too much on there. So sometimes the other thing that I like to do is I like to go in with some other of the base coat. Um, so I just have a little bit of the base coat set aside and then I'll just go in and do some drips with that. Um, and it'll kind of create those same cell like effects. So if you wanted to just add you can just add a cell that way that works too. Um, they do sometimes get a little bit misshapen though. So it's just a matter of preference. See what you like, play with it. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like when I do add those little flicks of high flow paint. Um, like I said, it's a little bit early to do that. And normally you wanna wait for a few minutes. I'd say that the gold is probably the most reactive. Um, so if you're using this iridescent fine gold Try putting a little bit on your palette first. And I'll do that here. So I'm just gonna put like a drop on my little palette. You can use, if you don't have like a plastic palette, you could use a plate and then just clean it off. And then we're just gonna Flick it on there. And so I there's I just kind of I don't necessarily plan out what colors I'm gonna add ahead of time. Um, usually it's just, oh, I feel like this color would really add to the piece. And then I'll just 
It's all very in the moment. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I will have like a, a common color palette in mind ahead of time, but usually I'm just kind of messing around and seeing what I like. Um, I've played with these colors enough to know how they react. And so I pretty much know what they're going to do at this point. Um, they are expensive. I will say that the high flow paints are pricey, but they hold their vibrancy. Um, and you'll see on a lot of my paintings, even before I varnish them, their colors are still incredibly vibrant. These paints are just so highly pigmented. And so you can kind of see how just flicking those paints, they still spread out a little bit. And we'll add a little bit of the, the teal. I love their teal color. It's this uh, blue lagoon teal. Well, I love all their colors, but I seem to use that one a lot. I'm gonna have to get a really big bottle of that one. And that's really it. I just kind of roll with it and I'll babysit a larger piece for several hours. I might go in and add some water to kind of mix the colors that I've flicked on a little bit. I'll let it sit. I'll go back and add more drips. So sometimes it's kind of a layering process. I'll go through that process a few times if the painting isn't where I want it to be. So. You know, just play around, have fun, try it out, develop your own style. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, let me know. And I'll bring you down for a close-up. Here are the dried results. This dried about three hours, four hours later. Um, the only thing I did off camera was I did squirt a little bit of water and add a few more drips, but that's really all. Thank you for joining me. Have a good day.